I hope you're having a great day, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to your front row seat to greatness, the property focus. We'll start today's show with a review of Kitangela Glass Eco Cottages, a paradise for art, nature lovers, as well as bird watchers. Each cottage stands out with amusing features, which we'll be learning about in just a bit. You do not want to miss the interesting design story from the owner, Nani Cruz. We'll also be learning about other works by Nani as seen at her magical glass studio. Ever wondered how they make that stained glass you see on the church windows or the mosaic art or the beautiful colorful glassware? Well, we'll be telling you this and much more in just a bit. Still, in today's show, we have the chairman of the Town and County Planners Association, Mr. Mairura Omwenga, who will be talking to us about the profession of planning. He'll be telling us why the dynamic process of managing and controlling developments is integral even as our country continues to expand its existing cities and develop new ones. Stay tuned for that important conversation. Of course, this is Property Focus, your window into the world of architecture, building construction, and real estate. I'm your host, Peter Ngigi. Have you ever looked at someone's work and thought, I'd like to get into your mind and understand how you came up with this? That's what I'm thinking about Nani right now. I mean, look at this house. How wild creativity is quite a sight. Let's go pick her brain on these designs and find out what inspired her. Tell us how you created these amusing bespoke cottages. Well, it wasn't that difficult because when I first came, yeah. it also rained. Um, <laughs> there was grass and nothing but grass, okay. long high grass mm -hmm. and a few, very few acacias out in the savannah. Okay. So um, we lived in a tent to start, but after that I thought maybe it's time I better build something. Yeah. So what you do in Africa and in Maasai land, you build a mud cottage. Mm -hmm. Of course, so we have very little mud though, because it's mainly rock here. Mm -hmm. So I, I started and I thought this isn't enough. So I started cutting grass and bundled it up and made walls out of that. Okay. And that worked very well. So when my first husband left and the second one came and brought me a bunch of roses, I said, that's very nice, but what I need is a bag of cement yes. so that I can Co uh, cover up the walls okay. and so that's how it started how many are there and in what sizes well they have uh, there's um, more and more because I love building ever since I started it so our our first cottage is the Maasai house but it's been fully rented out for now three and a half years so that was a true Maasai house the next one was as the pool house started, my son had just he's been to university and he became an architect. And I said, Lingai, here's something for you to build. And uh, he did some designs and I said, yeah, that's nice. Let's try this and that. And then, of course, he went away to do something else. And I finished it and did the extra bits and pieces. And that's the, the pool house with the, um, with the basement underneath, which used to be the house where Lingai lived, my son. The, um, well, the big pool house has lots of room and it has a basement down below which is another double bed so that can take at least eight people then i have the glass house which i built for my uncle who lost his wife and was needed family and it's mainly it's a lot of it's made out of daldever and glass he then also unfortunately left us and uh, now i rent it out and it has a double bed down below, it has a bathroom and a living room and a little garden outside and I'm just about to build in a, a kitchen into it so they can self, self, uh, you know, self cook for themselves. Anyway, and upstairs is more glass and a nice veranda and two single beds. And it's, it's very popular, the glass houses, yeah. What inspired the design of each of these cottages? Well, what actually, the, my, my big guru in building is Gaudi. Antonio Gaudi, Barcelona, the uh, cathedral, and everybody knows about Gaudi. And I read up, uh, some. I saw some of the pictures in the early, in the 60s actually, and was very impressed. And I thought, let's get out of these horrible square buildings that everybody has to live in with corners. And of course, coming from a Waldorf, an anthroposophical, 
background, everything is round or curved or organic, and it's important. So, but the other, uh, the other important um, uh, in, uh, inspiration was, of course, nature, and especially in Africa, the hills and, and the bushes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and animals, and also some people. So what amenities do your guests get to enjoy whenever they come to the cottages? Amenities, well, they don't get the Hilton. They get living in the bush with monkeys and with dogs and with freedom and with fresh air. We have a swimming pool and a sauna and I've got some camels you can ride and I have a wonderful out thing, um, the, the, our sanctuary that you can walk through if you're not scared of lions and buffaloes. And of course, there's my hanging bridge. Yes. And everybody uses that, ah. unless if you're really scared of heights. What is peculiar about the sauna? The, nothing except that it was for a long time the only sauna that's made out of bottles, until I heard that there's one in Chile that's also made out of bottles. What activities do you offer to your guests? Our guests are very busy on the whole. I mean, if they don't do tours or the bridge or camel rides, they can do, of course, workshops. And that's my other big thing. Everybody likes to do workshops. And I have quite a lot of schools coming, although they don't stay over, but to do the workshops, anything to do with glass and pottery. And you can also make your own glass, mosaic glass, um, stained glass, and uh, dal de verre, that's the block glass, all recycled glass. What has been your experience ever since you established this facility? Lots of experience, of course, whether it's um, uh, lions or leopard. We're, by the way, where we are, that's the leopard gorge. And it has been, it's an ancient African gorge. And that's, of course, where my hanging bridge goes over and is um, much admired and loved by many, although a lot are very scared. But the things that the tourists or the visitors or the guests can see, they have to like animals and wildlife. You can look across the Silole Sanctuary and you can see, just like the other day, some guests saw the birth of a giraffe happening right in front of you. I mean, where do you see that? Thank you, Nani. We're definitely informed about the cottages and so are our viewers as well. Wonderful. I hope lots of them will come. Absolutely. That was the design story of the cottages. You'll be hearing more about Kitangela Glass with Nani a bit later in the show. So stay tuned for that and more in just a bit. Thank you for staying with us. As I had briefed you at the beginning of the show, we'll be demystifying town and land planning with Mr. Mwairura Omwenga today. That's the conversation we'll be having with our guest after the break. Do not go away. Welcome back, you're watching Property Focus, and in this segment, we have the TCPAK Chair, who's also the Practicing Planner, Mr. Mwairura Omwenga. Let's chat with him about the role of town planners. Mr. Mwairura Omwenga, welcome to Property Focus. Thank you, welcome too, to my office. Fantastic. Right. In definition, who is a town planner? A town planner, then, essentially, is uh, somebody who has, is a professional, okay. is a professional who has been trained to, to see how best to organize various land uses in towns. And the various land uses is, if you look at a typical town, you have got housing, you have got industries, you have got commercial activities, you have got schools, you have got hospitals, you have open spaces, recreational spaces, you have got transport networks, okay? So the town planner then organizes these activities on land. What kind of projects require a town planner? Really, I don't uh, uh, see uh, any project that really doesn't require a town planner because first and foremost, we're talking about the town. Who is it that is not affected by what is taking place in a town? The town planner is really in, in every sphere of our lives because if you talk about land, where he manages the way land is used, mm -hmm. all this activity we're talking about, which activity really does not require the utilization of land, whether it's agriculture, whether it's about infrastructure, whether it's about buildings, whether it's about housing, 
Okay, so really all aspects of our, our, our of our lives mm -hmm. require the town planner being mm -hmm. able to bring order mm -hmm. the way in which we use that limited land resource. So what does it take to become a town planner? The town planner uh, essentially the in the in the early days in the early days we town planning was only a postgraduate uh, uh, degree. You could only acquire uh, to become a town plan at the postgraduate. It required you first of all to to do. Uh, uh, three main professions in the built or in the learned profession. You either needed them to have been an engineer, a civil structural engineer for that matter, or you needed to have been an architect or a land surveyor. Okay? So professions in the built uh, uh, environment. Mm -hmm. After that, then you went for a master's in urban and regional planning. Mm -hmm. So that was the first route, and for a long time, that is how the professions came. Mm -hmm. But in the last um, uh, 15 or so years, we have actually introduced an undergraduate degree. So you can also now become really a, a professional town, town planner, planner by first of all acquiring an undergraduate degree in urban and regional planning. Mm -hmm. And then now at the master's you can now specialize mm -hmm. in an area of, of, of town planning, for example, industrial development, okay. commercial development, housing development, mm -hmm. and so on. Or infrastructure mm -hmm. uh, development or transportation in that particular uh, regard. Are there any certifications to becoming a town planner right after studying? We have got what we call our, our regulatory bodies, bodies, okay? And uh, here we have got our fiscal planners and registration uh, board, okay, mm -hmm. that regulates our, our activities. Okay. So you need to be registered for you to be able to, uh, to, to practice. Okay. Yes. What is the biggest challenge town planners face in the industry today? Biggest challenge of our profession today, I think I must say, is about uh, the really what's also ha happening to, and is speaking to our country, I think the issue of corruption, the issue of corruption is really a major problem. And when you talk about corruption, it's really gone into many areas of our, of our sphere. And for us, then who deal with buildings, who deal with land, mm. okay? I think there is a lot of uh, challenges because then you find that people are being accused of building at the wrong place, or you are, you are developing on land that is not yours in that particular regard. Uh, or you are putting up a, 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 a building in a place which was meant for a school, but now you are putting on a, a, a commercial building. The next thing I think has got to do with the, the profession, I think, has also been uh, invaded by people really who are not qualified. Okay? The, this profession deals with the towns, it deals with the built form buildings, it deals with land. Okay? But uh, um, 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 I must confess that I think over time, the profession has invaded from people from very weak backgrounds. Mm -hmm. the people who have done history, okay, people who have done literature, okay. Now this, this certainly uh, doesn't all well because the, you have got very little understanding of the built uh, environment. So you are getting weaker and weaker people trying to get into the profession and that has really worked um, negatively against our profession. And I look forward to being able to strengthen and really get people from the built environment in that uh, regard and this element has not only affected the the practice but also right from from colleges so that you also find in a number of universities now you have got courses that are intended to produce uh, urban planners but really those courses are not properly what grounded in terms of staff okay in terms of uh, teaching facilities in that yes. particular regard and therefore at the end of the day you find graduates coming up that really are not strong as professionals in the built environment. And that's why you'll find traditionally uh, town planning as a profession will be uh, uh, in colleges or in universities will be a, a, a department that is within the, the, the built environment. Okay, So for yes. example at the University of Nairobi then you'll find it is part of the, 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 the faculty of architecture yes. uh, all within the college of engineering because then all these professions need to be speaking one another okay. and you actually take common courses that cut across all these other professions okay. in the built environment okay yes a parting shot if you look at our towns today i think they're not the best nairobi went by the mantra the green city in the sun yes we can no longer say so and that problem does not only just affect Nairobi. I think all our towns, I think they are not really in very good shape. Towns are really the engines of development. Towns are the centers of excellence. S towns are the, are, the, are, are, the, are, the, are the face of a society. For example, if, uh, if one wanted to know about Kenya, he actually just come to Nairobi 
and he writes a report and says, yes, the way I've seen Nairobi, then that's the picture of, 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 of Kenya. Indeed, a lot of the time, people know about London, but they, you ask them which country London is in, they don't know, okay, in that regard. So towns and cities are the face of people. So they need to be the best place, okay, yes. in terms of proper development, organization, okay, uh, in that particular regard. So I would really seek that we have got total over on which the way in which our towns are managed yes. in that particular regard. Then also uh, overhaul in our training institutions. We want really to make sure that they are trained and we are producing people who are focused on town planning. In fact, I'm looking towards having serious specialization. We need now to have town planners who specialize, for example, in housing development, yes. in commercial development, mm. industrial development, uh, uh, transportation. That's the only way we'll be able to tackle the, for example, the, 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 the massive problem we have in our transport sector, in the housing sector, and uh, in other areas of our development of our towns. Uh, then, of course, lastly, I think as town planners, it's important that we our, our attention is focused on the sustainable development goals as uh, stipulated by the United Nations. We must focus on the issues of climate change, damaging of the blue economy. All the money is from our towns yes. because that's the that's the main source of pollution yes. in that particular regard. Therefore, talking about sustainable development, talking about uh, climate change, you are actually talking about town planners who must therefore lead from the front. Mm. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Mairura. Delighted to have had you on the show. Welcome for also giving us the opportunity to Absolutely. be able to address you. Thank Absolutely. you very much. Absolutely. Great. Okay. There you had it from Mr. Mairura himself on town planning. Up next, let's have the billboard. Banda Homes brings to you Hillsview Estate with three bedroom bungalows, master and suit in a gated community along Thicker Road next to Mangu High School. These homes are on offer for just 3.5 million. For more information, call 0711-950-950. Now, we're back with Nani to learn about the history of Kitengela Glass and other of her works in the stained glass studio from a homestead in the semi-arid area with barely any trees in the 1970s to today's oasis covered in unique structures, lots of trees and natural habitat. Nani is all about glass. Now, let's hear about it. I was doing murals, mm -hmm. as you may have seen one or two, Mandaleo Yavanawake, yes. the big lady. Yes. But I couldn't live that way, so my architect um, said, Nanya's no way, you have to learn to make stained glass because there's so many missionaries coming into Kenya and they all want glass windows. So go and learn. Mm -hmm. So I went and learned and um, came back. And, and yes, it's a wonderful technique and it takes a long time to really pick, pick up how, what and where, as you heard about the glass painting, mm -hmm. um, only to find out that it's incredibly expensive that you have to get it imported from England, America, Germany, all over the place, because there is no stained glass, no colored glass in this region of the world, in our wonderful African con continent. Um, so, I mean, quite obvious, I had to make my own, which is what I did, mm -hmm. and I'm still doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What inspired you to start Kitengela Glass? Kenyans, and in fact, I think all Africans, have wonderful gifts with their hands. Mm -hmm. And they're not, it's not being appreciated enough. But we all know that this is the cradle of mankind, mm -hmm. but it's also the cradle of art. Mm -hmm. There you go. Okay. So the products and services that you offer the building industry, tell us about that. Dal de Ver is my favorite. Okay. It's glass blocks. Mm -hmm. And you can make enormous walls out of it, mm -hmm. as long as you have enough um, um, some tumor to go into it and okay. keep it going. Okay. And I've done lots and lots and lots of them and it's always fun. And I'm always thrilled when it's there and especially when the clients like it. What are some of the main uses and applications of your, of Kitengela glass? Windows. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's what, what I do, yeah. yeah. I do, sometimes we do floors and sometimes we do ceilings. Yes. Um, but basically that's, yeah. Mm -hmm. Some of the jobs that you've done in the past? The museum, yes, okay. my favorite. Okay. 
the museum. It's beautiful. It's still there. Yes. Everybody loves it, and yes. it is the museum. It's the the uh, the tree of of mankind. Okay. The footstep of mankind, okay. and then lots and lots all around, lots and lots of fossils mm -hmm. that are found in our museum. Yeah. And uh, if somebody is interested in your products, how then do they go about purchasing them? They call me and say, I would like this and that. Mm -hmm. And I say, where do you live? What do you want? Do you want a door, windows, floor, ceiling, whatever? And I send somebody and okay. we take pictures of it. Okay. And we make a few sketches and say, is, is it this? Mm -hmm. And they'll say, usually, yes, please. <laughs> Tell us about some of the new trends you've adopted. Is there any new kind of uh, art with stained glass that you've taken up? As I said, the, yes. the crushed art, yes. the crushed, uh, crushed bits and, uh, and I started with clear glass as well over there. Yes. And I'm actually, I'm very happy and very, very fond of that. Mm -hmm. And then of course we did, you might see outside, we yeah. did just ordinary hourglass in different colors mm -hmm. in a screen and it, they're all there and they really look magnificent. Yes, I've seen it actually outside. Yeah. It's really nice. So you've cut the glass, then how then do you put them together? Lead. With lead? Lead or copper foil. Okay. It's for the smaller items, we use copper foil. Okay. Like that Jesus there, mm -hmm. yes. he's got copper foil okay. around his forehead. Yeah. And, uh, but this is, this is lead. Mm -hmm. This is probably also copper foil when it gets very fine mm -hmm. and for lamps mm -hmm. and for sun catchers. Yes. Okay. And you also use cement. Well, that's for the daldeware. For the daldeware. Yeah. Uh, that's to make the tables, to make the chairs. Or any walls. Yeah, here. Yeah. Isn't walls. there? I used to have a daldevere back there. Okay. It's gone. Okay. The mosaic is also a very important art form for colored glass, but you can also use ordinary tiles, as you can see over there. Mm -hmm. This is quite nice. Yeah, and then look <laughs> over there, that one. Mm -hmm. That's another type of. That's exactly that, little pieces of glass. Yeah. That is actually from the beadle ladies. Yeah. And fi uh, fired at about uh, 500, 600 degrees. And you also have necklaces. And as well. we have necklaces and, okay. and everything, yeah. And bracelets as well. Yeah. That is quite nice. They're nice. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And that's how you go about that. Yeah. What is a parting shot to anybody who's aspiring to become a stained glass artist? Well, they have to come here and they've got to work. Okay and not expected to be paid for it mm -hmm. whilst they're training. Yeah. Especially the painting side is yeah. difficult, although I've had young painters okay. and they have turned out very well, but then they disappeared. Yeah. And I think quite a lot of them then start their own thing, okay. which is fine yes. and it should be like that. Mm -hmm. But um, I have, I'm still waiting to hear somebody who's really made it. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, that's wonderful. Thank you very much, Nani. Thank you. Delighted Peter. to have had you on the show. <laughs> Thank you. Good, good. We've come to the end of today's show. Property Focus is committed to educative, entertaining content from the world of architecture, building construction, and real estate. And as always, find us on social media and keep those conversations going. It's always a delight, always a pleasure to have you. I'm your host, Peter Gigi. Till next time, take care.